sitting there, if you're worshiping with someone today, somebody with you, said, uh, turn to them and say, I look pretty good, don't I, for coming through 2020. Amen. Say, oh, are you surprised that somebody could come through 2020 and still look as good as I do? Come on, turn to somebody and tell them that. Amen. Give out a praise because he brought you through. It was not because you were lucky not because you dotted every I and crossed every T, not because of your name or your family connection, but it is the family connection connected to him who indeed is our father. Um, had not been for the Lord who was on our side, and we recognize and honor that today. There is a word, beloved. There's a word. It's a familiar passage of scripture. First Samuel chapter number 16. Number one, thank you, Reverend, for reading that background. First um, Samuel 16, 1. And the Lord said to Samuel, How long will thou mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him as king over Israel? Fill your horn with all, and be on your way. I'll send you to Jesse the Be of Bethlehem. I've chosen one of his sons to be king. And I want to preach. I want to preach on letting go of the past. And here it is. If you let go of the past, your past will let go of you. Did you hear that? You need to write that down. If I let go of my past, then my past will let go of me and let me go. One more time. Listen, and what I want to push to you this first Sunday. And if you let go of your past, your past will let go of you and it will let you go. And somebody's on lockdown. You wonder why you're on lockdown, why you can't move, why you can't get on. You know where you ought to be. Know where you you know your destiny. You know your calling. You know you know. Uh, it, it, but 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 I'm on lockdown. And 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 I and it won't be long today on this this first Sunday. I, I want us. It is my prayer that you as an individual that that I might that as a church as a people that we might get where we need to be and have all the God intends for us to have. But I have two or three principles that I just want to lift briefly here this morning. And, and, and the key, the key, the key, the key is, I, I believe, that we get from this little passage this morning. Here it is, that if you are let go of your past, then your past will let go of you and will let you go. There are some things that will not let go of you till you get let go of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are some people who won't let go of you until you let go of them. Letting go of the past. Beloved, it was a time of political chaos in Israel. It was a time of problems politically. 
Israel had moved from a theocracy to a monocracy. That is, beloved, a government ruled by God to a government ruled by one man. It moved from a theocracy, theos being God, arcos meaning ruler, a God ruled government to a mono monarchy, mono meaning one, arcos meaning chief, to the rule of one man. During this monarchical period in Israel's history, uh, our first king was Saul. He was a big man. The Bible says that he stood head and shoulders above his fellows. He was an impressive man. He looked like a king. He was the hope of Israel. Parenthetically, I could run through here that don't be deceived by appearance. Don't be, a, don't be deceived by looks. A prophet named Samuel had a private encounter with Saul at a place called Shiloh and had privately anointed him king. Saul began his reign, and through a succession of violating the laws of God, God rejected Saul. The Bible tells us that the final thing that Saul did, that he attempted to amalgamate the priesthood and the kingdom. Yeah, he, he tried to combine the offices of the priesthood and the kingdom. He literally got ahead of Jesus. That was a role that God reserved only for Jesus. Yeah, yeah, he, he, yeah. Saul wanted to be priest and, and king. So Saul attempted to offer sacrifices, something that only the priests were allowed to do. As a result, beloved, of this open violation of the law of God, uh, Saul grabbed Samuel's garment. When Samuel turned to go away from him and uh, tore his garment in two. And Samuel said to Saul, he said, thus said the Lord, uh, uh, Samuel said, Saul, Saul, the Lord told me to tell you that he said, I have established your kingdom forever. But, oh my, there is this, there is this divine but. He said, tell Saul that I've established his kingdom forever, but I've taken the kingdom from his hand and given it to another. Amen. Oh, beloved, there will come a time when, when you, if you are out of line with God, that he will literally take it away from you and give it to another. Now, beloved, it was Samuel that pronounced this edict. It was Samuel that pronounced that the kingdom was taken from Saul and given to someone else. Now, Bible scholars tell us that it was approximately 18 months, uh, two to three years, uh, after Samuel made this pronouncement uh, that Saul was, that, that Samuel was still mourning over Saul. Yes, uh, from, from this pronouncement, it was between 18 uh, months to, to, to two or three years uh, that brings us to the time of the text. Uh, now, there are several things, beloved, that I want us to see in this story that I'm going to bid, bid you good morning and we're going to observe the Lord's Supper. Okay, yeah. The first thing I want, want us to see in this passage is that Samuel was mourning over that which he knew God had rejected. God told Samuel, Samuel, tell, tell Saul that I'm through with him. T tell him that I've taken the kingdom from him 
and I've given it to somebody else. Now listen, Samuel knew that God had rejected Saul. He was the one that made the pronouncement uh, of the judgment. And he, he said, tell him that I've taken the kingdom from him. Reading that in the original language, in the Hebrew, that, that means it, it, it really says that God has wrenched the kingdom from him, that he has pried it from him. They had literally forcefully taken the kingdom from Saul and he had given it to another. But yet here we are, oh, somewhere between 18 months and three years after, that Samuel was still mourning and crying over something that he knew was not the will of God. Listen, Samuel was mourning and asking God to do something for Saul, and Samuel knew that God was through with Saul. Listen, beloved, first part I want to push today is that if God is through with it, why aren't you? If God said it's done, why have not you agreed with God that it's done? Why are you still pushing what God has stopped? Yeah, and, and how do you approach this new year? Some are looking for, uh, uh, some of us are looking for things and hoping for things that will never be. Some of us are still wishing for things that are over because they are not in the will of God. Listen to the language of the text. How long? Did you hear me say it? How long? How, how long are you going to mourn for Saul? How, how, how long? Uh, how, how, how long are you going to mourn for Saul? How long, beloved, are you going to mourn for things that are over? How, how long are you going to mourn over things that are gone, things uh, that are no longer there? How, how, how long? How long are you going to stay on lockdown? And how long are you uh, going to stay right there? And, not be able to move on. How long are you going to allow your past to deny your future? Oh, how long, how long, how long will you chase Phantom? Oh, look at this tragedy, beloved. Samuel knew that it was over, that he kept praying for it. There are some things, beloved, that you know are over. You can't go back to them. God closed the door. They are gone, and we are still fighting crime to keep things afloat. Learn to let go what's gone and get over what's over. Preach past my home. Now, during those 18 months, God has something better in store, um, and Samuel blew 18 months. Yeah, yeah. God has something better in store, yes, and Samuel wasted uh, between 18 months and three years mourning over the past, but all the time he was mourning over, yeah, Saul. God has something better than Saul. Isn't that the nature of God? That whatever God takes from you, he knows how to replace. Oh, my God. Yeah, he was still mourning over Saul. But Samuel did not know that God had David in waiting. Oh, that's, that's, that, oh, that's all somebody came to hear today. There's somebody in this Zoom meeting today. And, and you're commiserating. You're mourning. You're having a pity party over what you lost and what's no longer with you and what you no longer have. But I've come to tell you today, when God takes Saul, he has a David in waiting. 
Oh, uh, David, uh, 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 little Samuel wasted all that time waiting on something that's gone. Uh, beloved, I tell you, when it's gone, uh, 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 let, it, let it be gone. Let, listen, let the past be past. Amen. It, and we need to let it go. And I, I declare, if you let the past go, the past will let you go. And the reason could it be that you're not going and moving is because you have been stifled and held back by the past. And you're wondering what's holding you back. Why you cannot make it to the next level, yes. You wonder what's holding you back. And it could be, it could be, beloved, that what, what's holding you back is what you're holding to. What's holding on to you has you immobilized because you are holding, because you're holding on to this. If it's gone, it's gone. Listen, brother, you can't look like you 35 if you 65. That youth is gone. Tell somebody gone. Forget it, baby, it's gone. And listen, amen. You, 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 35 is gone. And the only way you're going to see 35 again if you live to be 135, somebody say gone. A full head of hair, gone. Whole black hair, gone. Figure eight shape, gone. Tiny waistline, gone. Small dress size, gone. Sexual stamina, gone. Talk to me, somebody. Yeah. There will come a time, beloved, when it is gone, and when it's gone, it's gone. You see, there are some things that you needed in your life to get you where you are. All of us are a result of our experiences. There are some things and some people that we needed to bring us to this point, but they cannot go with us to the next level. The fact of the matter is, if we hold on to them or to that, it will impede us. It is dead weight that will not allow us to go to the next level. Yeah, there are some situations, beloved, that you need to move away from. There comes a time in your life that what you're holding on to will deny you your more. Somebody say more. Anybody ready for more? Anybody need more? Anybody recognize that God has more for you? And could it be that you are denying yourself the more of God? Amen. You're denying yourself what God has for you because you're commiserating commensurate over what you had. Oh my, oh my, beloved, don't let your past deny you what God has for you, yeah, in your future. So I raise the question, as God did to Samuel, how long? How long are you going to waste time? How long are you going to mourn? How long are you going to have a pity party? How long are you going to wait for what's not coming? How long are you going to sit by the phone and waiting for the call that's not going to come. How long, uh, 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 how long are you going to wait to try to rekindle a fire that, that's already gone out? Listen, beloved, let me tell you, if the horse is dead, the first thing you do is dismount. Talk, Pastor B. If the horse is dead, the first thing you do is dismount. Get off the horse. Come on now, talk to me. And he raised ground. How long? How long? How long? Oh, I don't know about you, beloved. Am I the only one in this room today? Guilty of wasting time. Commiserating over the past. Fretting over the past. Having a pity party over the past. You know, you know, thinking I have a right. 
yeah, to get back and to retaliate. Amen. And amen. How, how long? How long am I gonna yeah, want somebody to be paid back? How long am I gonna want somebody to well I, I could forgive them if I can make them feel like they made me feel? How long? How long? How long? Tell somebody, let it go. Oh, let go. And I tell you, beloved, if you let go of the past, then your past will let go of you. And when it lets you go, beloved, oh my God, you can free yourself. You can free yourself from whatever's holding you back by whatever you're holding on to. And I declare that if you let go of your past, then your past will let go of you. How long? How long? Now, Saul, see, see, Saul was a man. Saul organized the kingdom, and the kingdom needed to be organized. So Saul was the man to organize the kingdom. But, beloved, the kingdom needed to go to another level. The kingdom needed to be a people dedicated and subjected unto God. And Saul was not the one to do that. Amen. Israel needed a man to help Israel to get in a right relationship with God. Listen, and not everybody in your life can help you to get that place in God where you need to be. There are some things that you cannot take with you into that place that God has designed and designated for you. Listen, there's only room for you in that God designated place. Yeah, there's, there's some stuff, there's some baggage, come on now, in your past. There's some people in your past. There's some situations in your past. There's a mindset in your past. Yes, it took 10 plagues to get Israel out of Egypt, but it took 40 years to get Egypt out of Israel. Yes, there are some things that God has to get out of you. Yes, that will deny you to go to your next level and have all that God has designed for you. Oh, the question was, beloved, how long, how long, how long? Well, listen, uh, if God is finished with a thing, you better be finished with it too. If God is through with it, why aren't you? Let it go. God says, I have rejected him. Now, now understand that this, this, the rejection did not originate with Samuel. It was not Samuel that was doing the rejecting. It was God. It was Samuel that was making the announcement on God's behalf. But here, Samuel takes it upon himself to retain what God had dismissed. Oh, well, oh my God. For this amount of time, Samuel was wasting his time longing for that which was over. Uh, for that which was not be. And the question that God raises for us today on this fun Sunday, uh, first Sunday of a brand new year, how long, how long are you going to keep on doing the same old thing and expecting a different result? How long oh, are you going to keep on traveling the same old path and expect to end up at a new destination? How long? How long? When are you going to get it? When, when are you going to learn how to walk in the will of God? Uh, how long will it take for you to understand that God is the senior partner in this relationship? And, and let, let him do the driving. Let him plot the course. Let him be the leader. Let him be 
vid or yeah, yeah. How long, how long am I gonna uh, complain? How long am I gonna try to do it my way? When I know that my way does not work, it did not work in the past, why do I think it's gonna work now? How long? How long, how long, how long? Oh, how long? Now, now here, here it is. There's another reason here. Another reason here why, 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 why Samuel, uh, why Samuel uh, tried to resurrect this thing for Saul. All right. Could it be because it didn't go down the way he wanted it in the first place? It, it, yeah. And sometimes, believe it, beloved, the reason we want to resurrect stuff, when stuff ends, sometimes the reason we want to resurrect it because it didn't end the way we want it. There are some things, beloved, that are terminated. There's some things that end, and we try to restore it because it didn't end our way. Let, let me. My wife is sitting here. I got, I got to use this little illustration for it. When, when I was in high school, I was a star athlete. I mean, I was a football player. Uh, there was an article in the Courage Journal newspaper. Jesse Bottom, the first black to ever quarterback a, a, a white ball team, high school in, in the state of Kentucky. Got it in my scrapbook. I can show it to you. So I was, a, I was an athlete, a star quarterback in high school with him, and I was popular. And I had a girlfriend named Brenda. Brenda, Brenda. I, I was a popular athlete. And, 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 and Brenda and I were an item. Don't hit me on that. It's, I'm just an illustration. This is an illustration. I'm pretty on it. This is an illustration. Uh, uh, and 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 Brent, I was popular. And Brenda quit me. I mean, Brenda quit me. I was embarrassed. I was a popular athlete. And Brenda quit me. And everybody knew that Brenda quit me. They were talking about, you know, Brenda quit Jesse. Brenda quit Jesse. Brenda ain't with Jesse. Or I was so embarrassed. So I did, did everything I could to get Brenda back. I pleaded, I begged, I gave gifts, I gave everything. And I finally won Brenda back. Got Brenda back. Then one day during the lunch hour in the lunchroom, everybody was looking and I quit Brenda in front of everybody. <laughs> you see, and the reason I had to resurrect that thing was so I could kill it my way. See, it ended, but didn't end like I wanted to. I wanted to be in charge. Talk to me of how it ended. Yeah, so, so Samuel was trying to bring that thing back because of the way, yeah, it, 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 it went down. And there are times, beloved, that we want to resurrect things all for the wrong reasons. We, we, we want to resurrect it because it embarrassed us and it didn't go down our way. We want to do it. We want to do it. Talk to me, somebody. We want to do it our way. Oh, let, let, let me close down. I'm talking too long today. The question is, beloved, how much longer will you continue to yearn for that which God has put a period behind. Oh, oh, oh yes, my crime talked about commas in the Sunday school lesson this morning. But here God has put a period. The comma means a pause and keep on going. But when it came to the reign of Saul, God had put a period. But thank you, Mike. Simon was trying to put a comma well, God put a period. Oh, my God. Thank you. You just helped me, Mike. Listen, could it be that that's our problem, Mike, that we are placing commas? Oh, yes. Now, God has some commas for us. But in this sense, in this analogy, God placed a period behind the reign of Saul. But Samuel wanted to put a comma where God put a period. Could that be not our dilemma? Could that be not our difficulty? That we're trying to hold on to some stuff, 
some things and some people. And God has said in no uncertain terms that I'm through with that, that is over. If I'm through with it, why aren't you? Oh my God, my God. Well, let, let, let me close now. Well, and, and could it be? One reason that Samuel wanted Saul restored, could it be the one reason that Samuel wanted God to do something for Saul was because uh, Samuel did not think that God could do anything better than Saul. Let me say that again. Could it be that the reason Samuel wanted Saul was because he thought God couldn't replace Saul? Could it be the reason that Samuel was so gung-ho on the restoration of Saul? It because God, he thought God didn't have anything better than Saul. And also, could it be? That the reason that Samuel wanted Saul restored is because he thought that he and Israel could not make it without Saul. Oh, preach some, preach, Pastor Bottom. Yeah, it, 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 listen, it does not matter how great Saul is or was. Come to tell you, beloved, that God has something better. Amen. You see, the problem is that we take what we know, we have known as the optimum, as the standard. We take what we have and what we had as the standard for the highest and for the best. But beloved, I've come to that God has stuff that you have not even thought about, have not even imagined that is so much better than anything that you've ever known, had, or tried. God is a God of better. Oh, we make things the standard. But God has something better. What have you lost? I'm closing now. God has something better. Amen. And whenever God takes something from you, he's got something better. How long? How long will you mourn? How long will you mourn for Saul? Remember now, beloved, this was divine rejection. This was not something that the prophet Samuel had concocted. This was not an act of men, but this was God saying, I'm through with Saul. This was not political expediency. It was not something that the prophet concocted for the well-being but this was a result of the sovereignty of God. Well, uh, I'm closing by one tape that when God rejects something, he elects something. Did you hear what I said? When God rejects, he also elects. That's good, write that down. Let's type that in the comments. When God rejects, he also selects. But we, we put our attention on the reject, and we never really embrace the select. If you would look the eyes of faith and get your eyes off of God's reject and look your eyes on God's select, that whenever, whenever God rejects, God will select. And he's provided all this in Jesus Christ. Help me, Paul. 2 Corinthians 5, 21, you know where I'm going. It made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness. He's made the righteousness of God. Yeah, God had to reject our sin. And we risk. If we receive Jesus Christ, oh, because he's paid our sin debt for us. I'm closing when I tell you that God has something better. 
Oh, and you can trust God. You see, Samuel did not think he could make it without Saul. Oh, and I've come to tell you, beloved, as long as you have God, as long as you have, and I think we can all testify that mm, we made it through this pandemic year. And it was by the grace of God there were those who were not, who were more careful than we were, who contracted COVID and were taken out of here. Yes. There were, no, there were those who were more secure than we were. Amen. Yes, for some reason, God has allowed us to remain here for another, for he brought us through this year and Others, others of God who were more healthy uh, than we were. Uh, yeah, they didn't survive. Oh, oh, oh beloved, I, I tell you, yeah, I'm going to go forth with God. And I've come to tell you, beloved, he's worthy of our praise today. And I've come to tell you, beloved, that when praises go up, yeah, when, when, when praises go up, Praises go up. Did you hear what I said? I said, when praises go up, praises go up. We, we, for so long, the church has had that thing twisted and messed up. I don't know who came up with it, but he had it backwards. When praises go up, blessings come down. No, that's backwards. Praises go up because blessings have already come down. Talk to me, somebody in this house. Oh my God, can you praise God right now for the blessings that came down in 2020? Can you send up praises right now for what God has already done? You made it through 2020, not because you've been good, praise him. Not because you've acted right, praise him. Not because you paid your tithe, you know you better, praise him. Not because you dotted every I, not because you crossed every T, you ought to praise him. When praises go up, praises go up, and praise go up because blessings have already come down. I've come to tell you today, 2010, 2020, if it told us anything, it told us that blessings have already come down. While Psalm 22 does tell us, he does inhabit the praise of his people, but we praise him because of what he's already done. He's already saved. He's already paid my sin debt. He already gave his only begotten son. And I'll place my faith in him. I will thank him for the gift of life in Jesus Christ, and I'll praise him. And when praises go up, let praises go down. Yeah. Praises go up. Let me close them. Yeah, yeah. When, when God rejects something, he got, yeah, he elects something. I said, when he, he, when he rejects, he elects. He rejects his soul, but he elected David. He said, go, he said, T tell Saul, uh, because he tried to be king and priest, that I've snatched the kingdom from him and I've given it to somebody else. Listen, beloved, I don't want God to take anything from me, from me because I mishandled it. And I've come to tell you, beloved, when God trusts you with the stewardship of any of your talents or possessions, if you don't handle it properly and give it back to him, he literally can take it away from you and give it to another. Let me, let me, hey, oh, I'm getting in trouble today, showing up with my little son. I got my little wife sitting right here beside me. Yeah, yeah, beloved. Oh, there was a time in my life when I went through a terrible dilemma. I mean, I went through a terrible personal dilemma in the church, in ministry, uh, uh, in the household. A term, I went through an awful, terrible divorce that literally devastated me and almost ruined my ministry, almost made me 
throw in the towel. But when that happened, uh, I, I went I went to Louisville, Kentucky, to spend a couple of weeks with my parents and to begin the healing process. And 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 one afternoon, my dad and I were sitting on the front porch, and we were talking. My dad was a source of wisdom. He was a wonderful, wonderful man of God, and he, my, my my hero, my best friend. Encouraged me. We were sitting on the front porch and at 1200 Cecil Avenue in Louisville, Kentucky. And as a uh, across the street was Finley's supermarket. And in front of the super that, and I worked in that supermarket as a little boy for 50 cents an hour. And um, and uh, in front of the supermarket is the bus stop. And we were sitting out on the porch in that afternoon, it must have been about one or two o'clock. And the bus stop was there. And we looked up and Sister Miss Swafford across the street came running out of her house. The bus was at the stop and she was on her way to work. She worked the second shift. As she was running to get the bus, the bus pulled off and Miss Swafford missed the bus. And there she was standing there on the bus stop and the bus was gone. And my dad said, Jesse, did you see that? I said, what, what'd you see there? Miss Swafford, I said, yeah, I saw her. I said, she came running out of the house and she missed the bus and the bus is gone. She's there. She said, she's still standing there. I said, yes, she is, Daddy. I said, what do you mean? She said, well, he said, yes, sir. She missed the bus. But if she stays there for 45 minutes, another bus is coming. I don't tell somebody, today, stay at the bus stop. Stay at the bus stop. That's what I'm talking about. Stay at the bus stop. You may have missed that bus. That bus is gone. But stay, come on, talk to me. Stay at the bus stop. There's a better bus coming. If God rejects something, he elects something. If he takes something, he'll give you something better. God told Israel, Samuel, yeah, you think that Saul is the only one that God has? No. God has a David. And God's David is better than your Saul. Tell somebody God's David is better than your Saul. Yes, you, you want your Saul, but God is through with your Saul. Be done with your Saul. Embrace God's David's. So he go, he says, he says, Samuel, go to Bethlehem. Bethlehem. Beth. About that second letter in the Hebrew alphabet, meaning how. Yeah, and Lahim means bread. Bethlehem, Judah, and Judah means praise. Go to the house of bread in the place of praise. And when you go to Jesse's house in Bethlehem, Judah, I select a king in his house. You will find your king in the place of praise. <laughs> oh my God, listen. Amen. If you can get your eye off of Saul and pray your way to Bethlehem, you can embrace the king. You know his name, don't you? His name is Emmanuel. Amen. Yeah. Emmanuel is who he is. Jesus is what he does. Mm -hmm. Emmanuel is God with us. Jesus means you say. Listen, Emmanuel is who he is, but Jesus is what he does. Amen, beloved. Get your eye off your soul, and God has you. So praise your way to Bethlehem. Can I get anybody to help me give God some praise right now? That I'm going to praise my way and embrace my king. His name is Jesus. I said, his name is Jesus. And everything that I've lost, help me now, uh, everything that the canker worm and the palm of worm took from him, amen, he, I'm going to get it back. I'm restored, I'm rekindled, I'm renewed. Can I get a witness? Yes, uh, Samuel, Samuel, you made a mistake, Samuel. You thought you that you had to have Saul, but listen, Samuel, let me tell you something from my own experience. 
as long as you got God, you can make it. Can I get a witness? Can't, do I have anybody in the house who said, as long as I have God, I can make it. I didn't have everything I wanted in 2020, but I had God. Oh, where would I be had it not been for the Lord who was on my side? Oh, beloved, let go of your past. And I declare, if you let go of your past, the past will let go of you. And what Jesus does, he pays your sin debt. Amen. Um, you cannot change your past, but Jesus can cover your past for you on your behalf. He will blot out your sins. Isaiah says he will take your sins, throw them into a sea of forgiveness, put up a sign saying, no fishing. And I get a witness. And one of these old days, hallelujah, we're going to stand before the judgment bar of God. Be judged according to deeds done in this body. And we've already had that first judgment at Calvary, that my sins were judged at Calvary. I've been justified. That means I did it, but I'm not charged with it. And because of that, I'm justified. He has covered my path. He's keeping me in the present, and he will take me into my future. If I don't let my past, oh, Block my present and prevent my future. Love it. Let go of your past. And your past will let go of you. And your past will let you go. Let's go forward in Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Let go of your past. Your past will let go of you. 23 for all of sin and come short of his glory. 623 it says, uh, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Romans 5 8 says, but while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. All oh, beloved, love. And 1013 says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The blood, if you will call upon the name of the Lord, you can be saved. May God bless you. And join us, beloved, on Facebook at the Beulah Baptist Church, The Beulah Experience. And this is Pastor Jesse Ward Bottoms, Jr., The Beulah Baptist Church, Upper Kipsy, New York. May the Lord bless you and may the Lord keep you is our prayer for you.